Hello, I'm David Shipman. I'm the culinary director of BAO, Culinary Arts Department. I understand that you're watching this so you have ideas or future plans to become a professional chef. This excites me an awful lot. Uh, being a professional chef is probably one of the most gratifying thing that I've ever done. Uh, it gives me the freedom to travel. Just put a backpack on your back and go and visit countries. Uh, you're never out of work if you're a good chef. It treats you, you become aware of how to deal with people in a much better way. You become more tolerant, you become stronger, you become a champion. Uh, you can go to restaurants and supermarkets and understand exactly what it is you are uh, preparing and doing. Uh, and also the bonus is, if you're a male chef, uh, there's nothing so attractive than a man who can cook. And um, I can speak for that from experience. So I'm going to give you a small demonstration today of a recipe when it comes from a very famous restaurant in London called Le Gavroche. This is basically a souffle. Uh, it's actually called a souffle Swiss. Uh, it's made slightly different. Uh, we're going to put it together. I'm going to give you the demonstration of it. So the difference, the, the, the difference between this recipe and the recipe in the Gavroche is that we have spinach inside. Spinach is a bed. But basically it's a bechamel, which is made up of butter and flour, generally about equal parts. Milk, and then while it is come cooking, the flour is absorbing the, the starch and the flour is absorbing the liquid. We then finish off with some adding some uh, egg yolks. The next thing is that we have some egg whites here, which we will whip up, fold in uh, to our uh, bechamel uh, mixture. Then put these into some ramekins. We'll bake them in the oven, 200 degrees about, approximately, for about three or four minutes. Take them out, uh, present them on top of this plate, where there will be a bed of spinach, some Gruyere sauce, and the souffle will go on top. We will place it back in the oven. It will then come out, finish off with a bit more sauce, and then that will be ready to be served. A very easy, uncomplicated dish. Some people think souffles are difficult. I wanted to demonstrate how simple they can be. So we're going to wilt the spinach. Wilt the spinach means we are just going to cook it till it softens up, softens up nicely. We don't want to make it go black. That will be overcooked. And it's a, about a minute not even a minute. While it's in the pan, softening, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and that's it. It's finished. Take that out. Next we are going to make our bechamel. So not such a high heat, quite a lowish heat. First thing we'll melt the butter approximately 50 grams. We want the butter to slightly bubble because that will give out a nice nutty flavor. We'll take another pan, we will heat up the milk. You can hear that bubbling, it's going a little bit more browner. Now we put the flour in directly in one go and stir the flour. This is basically how we make a roux and this is used to thicken a sauce. Now this is called a blanc roux and we want to make a white roux, so it's a little bit longer. And when it starts to look like sandy consistency, this is when it's the right time to add the milk. Okay, while I'm waiting for the milk to heat up, I'll explain to you something about our profession. Being a chef is something I can say was probably one of the greatest things I decided to do. There were many things. I wanted to be a fireman, then a soldier, then a carpenter. But I decided to make a career as being a chef. And I'm so happy that I chose that. I traveled the world. I eventually ended up in Turkey. And in 2003, we opened the first culinary arts department within a university in Turkey. I've taught most of the teachers that teach in universities. After eight years of that university, we left and we went to another university 
which we were there, we were there five years, were missing something. We were missing the support and the belief from the owners or the chairmen of the university. Here at Bao, uh, we have everything we want. We have a very ambitious owner who gives us everything that we want. Uh, I am very, very happy here, and so is my wife, Dilistan, uh, whereas uh, we can fulfill our dream of giving the best education possible. Being a teacher, the students are my plates, and we are only as good as we are by the quality of the education that our graduates have. So this is our motivation to make sure that we will give the best education possible. So we are adding the milk, which is boiled, a little bit at a time. Don't add it too much, too quickly, because we don't, we, it's not good if it gets too lumpy. So we just, and be very careful not to splash your milk everywhere. So break down the roux a little bit. Right, when you get it more or less creamy, like so where you've beat most of the lumps out, then we can use our whisk. And then finish off the, with the rest of the milk. Small circles, and slowly bring them up bigger and bigger and bigger. And now you can see that there are no lumps inside. Switch back to our spatula, and we need to cook the flour. So this is the term we use, cook out the flour. Uh, we need to bring this to the boil for a couple of minutes so the flour is cooking out. And then we are going to add some egg yolks. Being very careful to keep the saucepan clean all the time, keep the cleanness. Then add our eggs. And then take it off the heat. And this is our base, base for our souffle. We will then add some egg whites to this. Let's go back to the whisk so we can whisk out all the lumps. So we end up with a nice creamy sauce. So we're making sure that we've cooked out all the flour and the eggs, keeping the saucepan clean at the same time. You can see the heat's not too much. It's not a great high heat. And we'll just put that to the side while I'm whisking these egg whites. We'll whisk them to firm peak. Uh, while I'm whisking them, I'm going to tell you that how wonderful it is to be a chef for ways how you can deal with people. The hardest thing in life is interacting with other people, having a relationship with other people. Being a chef, you may think you're good, but it doesn't matter how good you think you are as a chef, it matters how other people think of you. How they think of you, is going to bring your success. One of the skills that we have to learn is how we can benefit from this situation. This means that you need to become a very good team player. You need to form bonds with your classmates. You go to a supermarket and you can look at a piece of fish in front of you and you will know just by looking at it if it's ready, if it's good. Or a piece of meat, the color of the piece of meat how the fat is marbled, what type of meat you should use for what type of dish. These are all things that, as far as the education that you get, you use in your personal life. One of the things that I get asked in the beginning of every semester when the students is in front of me is, who is the greatest chef I ever worked with? Now, it's a difficult question, but I actually found the answer very quickly when I realized it was my mother. And all of you know that the passion you get for food comes from your mother. Coming home from school, putting your key in the door, understanding what it is you're going to eat. That passion, that happiness you feel. Our job as a chef is to recreate that for other people. I'm not going to teach you how to cook. Nobody can do that. We can teach you how to solve problems. We can teach you that you have these ingredients in one hand and you must put them there as the final dish. And on that journey, you'll have many questions to ask. The result of this final dish is based on how good of an education you've got. How good that dish is based on your ability to solve problems. Now, when I'm saying to you that I'm not gonna teach you how to cook, let me put this in a different way. If you drive a car, 
You remember the first day you got your driving license. You remember that. You have to do this reverse parking. You have to look behind. Does that post line up with that mirror? We don't drive like that anymore, do we? We drive according to the emotion. We drive according to, are we going to see our friends? Is the sun out? Is there something nice on the radio? We drive for, the, well, that's how we cook. So to sum it up, I'm the driving instructor of the kitchen. And with the information I give you and the teachings and the education that we give you as a, as a group, uh, this will enable you to make the best decisions possible to make you the greatest chef you can possibly be. Now I've got my egg white, whisked up nicely like so. I'm going to add this directly and with a whisk I will cut and fold this into my mixture. I don't want to destroy all the air bubbles. This is cutting and folding. Cutting and folding. The air that's trapped inside the whites expands and this causes the souffle to lift. And the milk that's inside of the souffle turns to steam. And this gives us another lift. So these two things combined should raise our souffle like this out, out of the ramekin. Understanding what happens to produce when you apply heat is what it is to be a chef. Because when you understand this, then you can make decisions. You can write your own recipes, like a musician would write his own music. You know what it's gonna be like because you know the rules. Okay, you can see that's very light now. I've got nearly 99% of all of that egg white folded in. So we'll put this to the side. The oven is set at 200 degrees. Uh, probably about three, let's say four minutes. Take our souffle mixture. Empty it inside, fill it to the top. So once we've filled them, we need to level them off, flatten them up. This way they will have a flat top and grow come up, rise equally. Once they are flat, you take the end of the knife or your finger and just wipe across the top. Take your knife, just grove inside. 200 degrees, pop them inside. We don't compromise on the education we give our students. We don't compromise on the ingredients we buy. Just for an example, this is Gruyere. This actually comes from Switzerland. It's not another advice, it's an imported thing. And this Gruyere, if I was to tell you the price at the moment of a kilo, you would die. But we don't believe in that. We believe that education, there is no price limit on education. We use the best ingredients, probably. We buy the best meat from the best providers the best fish from the best fishermen and of course we don't spare any cost to making sure that you have the best teachers with the best education. It's our role, our job to make sure that you become better than you think ever possible. Don't take my word for it. Check out our ex-students, people that have graduated from us. Google us. You will see out for yourself. Okay, souffles are ready. So while they're here, we will just get finish our sauce. On our plate, we will place some spinach on the base. Pop a little bit of our cream sauce. Okay, so the next thing, we just flip the souffle out. So it's like this. We grate over it some gruyere, like so. And then we place it back inside the oven. After two minutes of cooking, extra cooking, we will end up with something like this. So, enjoy it.